So we'll go ahead with the next problem. The statement of the problem is laid over here. So we have got the 10 meter thick clay which is underlined by the sand layer of 20 meter depth and the groundwater table is 5 meter below the ground level and uh, the soil above ground water table is capillary saturated yes and the saturated unit weight of the soil is given it as 19 kilonewton per m cube and take the unit weight of the water as gamma w and evaluate the change in the effective stress if the groundwater table rises to a ground level at point p at shown in the figure and the figure is as follows so you have got the first of all uh, clay uh, which is 10 uh, meter thick which is underlain by a sand layer which is uh, 20 meter thick so the thickness of the sand is 20 meter and uh, the depth of the groundwater table is 5 meter below the surface of clay layer 5 meter below the surface of clay layer therefore this is this becomes the initial groundwater table and the soil which is above the groundwater table is completely uh, saturated by the capillary forces in initial stage so after all they have asked to evaluate the change in the effective stress once the groundwater table rises to a ground level but you have to calculate effective stress at point P and point P is given it in the sand layer. So I'll proceed with this problem. So initially uh, the groundwater table is at location 1 1. So initially you need to find it out the effective stress at point P which is in the sand. So in order to calculate effective stress, first of all you need to calculate the total stress and pore water pressure. So this is the initial groundwater table location. So I'll write first initial stage. At initial stage, total stress is equal to, since uh, this is capillary uh, saturated, right? So initial at initial condition, the sigma becomes equal to uh, gamma of the uh, clay gamma saturated I will take gamma saturated into since it is capillary saturated a scapillary uh, zone so I will take for this zone as well as gamma saturated so gamma saturated into 5 plus gamma saturated into this 5 so it becomes gamma saturated into this is the total stress and uh, the effective stress uh, becomes equal to total stress minus pore water pressure. So initially if I insert a piezometer at the point number P you will get the rise in water table rise in the this piezometer equals to the initial groundwater table location. So therefore it becomes equal to uh, U becomes equal to gamma W into phi O. So what, what I have done, I have done the, in the at initial stage, I will calculate sigma, I have calculated pore water pressure and I just deducted the pore water pressure from the total stress in order to get in the effective stress. So be, therefore effective stress becomes equal to gamma saturated into 10, into 10 minus phi u into gamma w. So it becomes equal to uh, so I, I'll not place the, all the numbers over here. I'll just keep it as it is. 10 into gamma saturated minus phi into gamma w. This is initial. This is initial uh, condition. I'll make it a box. This is initial condition. So finally, the groundwater table has uh, rise to a level equals to the as, as given in the table up to the ground level it has rise so for the next condition if groundwater table rise to this particular level that is level suppose 2 2 at ground level so the total stress becomes equal to total stress becomes equal to since here it was initially capillary saturated and uh, therefore after rising the groundwater table to this particular location 
again you will get the saturated density obviously you, you need to take it into account so it becomes gamma saturated into depth 10 which remains as it is at point number p which is just below this uh, interface between the clay and sand and uh, therefore uh, you will get the same total stress that was uh, which was previous because previously you've got the capillary so therefore you are going to get the same total stress uh, u which is a pore water pressure so uh, if you insert the pore if you insert a standpipe or piezometer into a sand to calculate the pore water pressure can you guess where the uh, position of the water table is after inserting uh, piezometer at point B obviously it has to be at the second location therefore this will be the final location right because we are not considering a flow condition remember so there is no flow condition so if there is no flow condition the water table has to be uh, equal to the piezometer pressure so therefore pore water pressure becomes equal to the hydrostatic water pressure so u becomes equal to gamma w into 10 because this was 5 and this was 5 so it becomes gamma w into uh, 10 therefore uh, effective stress becomes equal to sigma minus u which is total stress minus u which becomes 10 into gamma saturated minus 10 into gamma w and this is after uh, rising of the water table up to the ground level this is the final condition number two so this was the initial condition first and the second you've got this uh, condition so if you look at uh, all this equation i'll write rewrite the first condition which was 10 into gamma sat minus 5 into gamma w. So if you look at all, all both the equations, you'll probably get the answer to this question. This and this, a change, that means delta sigma dash, which is the change of the effective stress from first to second, is by 5 into gamma w. But for for if you compare at the first condition, at the second condition, you'll get the decrease in the effective stress. So therefore, sigma dash, I'll write it as over negative. Negative indicates decrease. So answer will be a decrease by five times of gamma w uh, for, for this particular problem. The answer is uh, decrease by phi times of gamma w okay fine uh, i'll extend this problem and uh, uh, if i take just take the another water level as marked by level 3 3 and level 4 4 this i consider it as one meter this again i consider it as one meter so if i increase a water table from ground level up to a level 33 then and and also from uh, level 33 to level 44 4, what will be the change in the effective stress if i want to calculate so remember uh, even if you increase the water table above its ground level so you will not uh, find any kind of change in the effective stress which is very very important statement i'll write it over here so any change in the water above above ground level so that means if you have got the water table at 3 3 location and if you got the water table at four fourth location so that means if any if there is any change in the water level above ground level then there won't be any change in the effective stress okay. 
this is very very important uh, statement so even if you raise the water level above ground level by any amount you will not get any change in the effective stress and even uh, it can be proved uh, I will not go into deep of that proof and you can also able to do it at the at the exercise you may take so you consider this particular case for if it is at level 3 3 and if you rise the water table up to 4 4 there will be only change in the uh, pore water pressure uh, and uh, there will be equal change in the total stress so therefore the whatever uh, so i'll give you the same proof as it is so so effective stress is equals to the total stress minus pore water pressure so therefore if i just increase uh, water level from 3 to 4 there will be uh, equal increase in the total stress similarly there will be similar quantitative increase in the pore water pressure so therefore the u will increase by suppose 10 then the sigma will also increase by 10 same amount so there won't be any difference in the increase so if you got initially 100 and this was initially a 50 so you'll end up at getting sigma dash equals to 50 for initial case first case but if you in the second case rising of the ground level beyond this level 3 3 2 4 4 you get the increase in equals to 10 here and also you will find the increase in pore water pressure equal to 10 over there so finally you will end up at the same value of the effective stress so therefore there won't be any change in the effective stress no change in the effective stress remember this is very very important and uh, in your in your city level examination also and also in computer examination this similar kind of the questions are being asked so if you increase a water level from 3 g to 4 4 even if you increase or decrease the effective stress will not going to change within a soil sample but yeah if there isn't any kind of increase or decrease in the groundwater table below the ground uh, natural ground level then yes there is be increase either increase or decrease in the effective stress so uh, this finishes the problem number three uh, in the chapter of uh, uh, capillarity and uh, effective stress thank you